Hello and welcome to the Calculated Columns tutorial. In this tutorial we will take a look at adding a calculated column to a list or library. A calculated column is a calculation that is based on other columns. They can be used in a variety of ways such as calculating dates and times, performing mathematical equations, or to manipulate text. In this example we will use a calculated column and a list to manipulate text. Here we have an employee directory contact list displaying the first name and last name columns. We would like to see those names combined in a single column, so we will add a calculated column that will join the contents of those two columns together. To get started here from our employee directory list to add our new column, we click on the settings drop down menu, then select create column. First thing we need to do is type in the name of our new column, which will be full name. Below that, select the type of information the column will hold, which is a calculated column. And that displays below here a formula box where we can either build our own formula or use one of the many built-in SharePoint functions. In this example, we are going to build our own formula. Our formula basically will say to take the contents of the first name column, follow that by a space, and follow that by the last contents of the last name column. To get started, all formulas must begin with an equal sign. And then we need to reference the first name column. To the right, you'll see a list of all the columns in our list. You'll see first name here, and I'll double click on that to add it to our formula. It adds that column name, inside square brackets. Following for the first name column, we want to indicate to add a space. So we type the ampersand symbol and the space, which must be enclosed in quotes. Any text characters in a text formula such as this must be enclosed in double quotes. We're going to follow the space character with an ampersand and then a reference to our last name column. We go back to our list of columns, locate the last name column, double click on that, and SharePoint automatically adds that column name to our formula. So at this point our formula is complete, which basically says the con take the contents of our first name column, add to it a space, followed by the contents of the last name column. Below the formula box, we select the type of data returned from this formula, which is a single line of text, and that is already selected by default. So all we need to do is go to the bottom of the box, select OK, and that returns us back to our employee directory list. And as you can see on the far right, the full name column has been added to our list, combining the contents of the first name and last name columns. Most likely at this point, you would want to modify the view that you're using for this employee directory list by removing the first and last name columns and adding to it the new full name column that you've just created. So for additional assistance with SharePoint formulas or the many built-in functions, click on the help icon in the upper right corner of your SharePoint window. This displays the help window in which at the bottom right, you want to click on the link for formulas and functions. Here you will find several links to help on the various built-in functions and formulas. Thank you, and this concludes our tutorial on SharePoint calculated columns.